All right, it's another exciting day of React, one of the major components of our MERN stack. And as you can see, we have started up a brand new project for us to start looking at things and doing things. And, you know, for me, I, I love being able to do things that kind of match up with human life, things that we can look at and go, yeah, I, I do that. And so, you know, one of the things that I think of is shopping lists. You know, our state, we've been working through state and we take one piece of state and it saves information. But, you know, we, aren't, we haven't quite gotten into that point where we can start pulling it all together and saying, hey, now I can make a list of things. And this list of things is going to, you know, I use the one form, but it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. And that's, that's what we're hoping to do today is kind of take our forms and our state that we've been working with before and bring it to the next level. Now, in the process, we're going to start looking at different things like being able to do specialized for loops. There's two specialized types of for loops that we deal with in React. One is map. And the other is filter. Now, it's pretty simple. Those two, they can only work on array data structures. It has to be an array. But an array can hold whatever you want in each element. So you could make it strings or numbers or entire objects. An entire object could be just one element in your array. And as long as you have an array, you can use these specialized for loops. Map is designed to take an array and do something with every single element in that array. So for example, if I wanted to repeat a section of HTML code, or I wanted to repeat a specific component for every single object found inside of an array, I can do that because the map will make it very easy. The syntax is actually pretty easy um, for you to just put the pieces where you want and it creates all those HTML pieces over and over for you. Pretty cool. Filter does a similar thing. It's still a for loop. It's going to run through over and over and over again. But the difference is, is filter is going to take things out. All right. And so I'm going to just see if I can do this real quick. I have got a couple of quick files. All right. Map is, you know, it's a very common thing. It's a standard JavaScript thing. It's not specific to React, so you can use it with other languages, but it's very simple. Map is going to go over every element in the array, and it's going to use a fat arrow. And it's going to say, you, you tell me what to do, and I'll do it. All right? So if I come here, and I just say node map demo, OK? What it did is it went through each one of these elements and it went ahead and returned this x times 2 and created a brand new copy of the array here. The output of map is a full-blown array, but I can return whatever I want in this array. So if, for example, I wanted to do something else, there is, when I look at my callback function, the very first thing about this function is it has the ability to bring in three parameters. Three arguments, I should say, that because I'm calling it, it's an argument. The actual function takes in parameters. Little distinction. Um, three possible uh, parameter or arguments that I can pass in. The first one is going to be, this is the value. And the value is saying, hey, we're going to take in each element from the array one at a time. The second thing it's going to give me is a number. 
It's the index into the array. Index 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, depending on how big your array is. And then the last thing it can give me is this array. This is the original array that we're dealing with. So it would be the equivalent of array one. And just to show you how this works, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna just give us all these pieces. Okay. And I am going to now finish out what looks like a function. All right, hopefully this is starting to look a little bit more familiar to you because this is kind of the way that we've been doing things with our fat arrows. And if I just add in a console.log of x and then a console.log of index and a console.log of array, oops, a ridge, ridge array, there we go. Okay, now what's gonna happen is when I come down here and I run it again, it's gonna give me more information. Every time it passed through this map with a new value, the very first index, index zero, gave me a one and I have a copy of the original array. Index one gave me a value of four from the array and I, the original array. Index two, nine, and index three, 16. In the end, this map, not only did it complete this work, but it gave me a value back for every single one of those elements and created a brand new array that was saved into map one and that's why I can print it down here with everything doubled. All right. Questions about map? All right. Filter is just a little bit different. Okay. Filter, I can't do a ton of things. Well, I, let me take that back. I can do a lot with it. Technically, if I add some parentheses or some curly brackets, what happens is I have to add in a keyword called return. If I don't do anything but one single thing, I don't have to have this return. I don't have to have curly brackets. I think we might have mentioned this earlier when we were very first learning about arrow functions, if you only have one statement to do, you don't have to have the curlies, you don't have to have the keyword return. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do a console log of word. And this dot filter is going to work only on arrays, just like map. It allows me, again, the same three things I could get out of this, it could give me the string, the number, the index number, and the original array. Um, and so what it's gonna happen here is this is gonna go through and it's gonna print out every word. Now map returns a full array with a matching element for every single element we went through. Filter is a way of creating a brand new copy of an array, but I limit what gets added to that new array. So the return of filters, uh, of filters anonymous function here, the return of that has to be either true or false. If it's true, it gets included in the new array. If it's false, it is excluded from the array, all right? So here I did a simple comparison. If my word's length is greater than six, then yes, I keep it. If the word is less than six, I ditch it, all right? So if I come down here and I say node filter demo, 
what's happened is it only gave me the results because I didn't save my file. Let's try that again. All right. So here it went through every single one of the elements in my array. And what it said is, if you're greater than six characters, I keep you. And I will return, I will put that assigned as a new array into this new variable. And so this is a quick and easy way for me to get things into state if state is an array and out of state if it's not supposed to be there. Now, these two things are going to be used specifically in our demo today as we start to talk about how do I create a, uh, a, com a combined state where I can save a whole bunch of objects in an array, and then how can I manipulate it? Can I add something new to the array? Can I remove something from the array? Well, yeah, we can. We can use map and filter. So to do this, the first thing that we got to do is we got to clean up our, our stuff and probably get rid of our bottom here for just a little while as we go through and clean things out and start our process. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like to have just an idea of what is this going to look like, right? So my, my web page that I'm going to work with here is it's going to have to take in some data in a form and it's going to then have to display it, right? So help me out here. I figure here's my form. So add item. What are we going to need for a shopping list? An input field, an add button. Okay. So we'll have add here. What type of fields, what type of data do we need to grab? Text, unless you're going to get granular with how much you need. Okay. Well, here we could say a name, a quantity, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that sounds pretty reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and then when I, when I come to display the items, you know, here's my list, right? My shopping list. And the shopping list is going to have um, item one, maybe the quantity, uh, and then maybe a remove button. Mm -hmm. Does that sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems somewhat reasonable, so Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna save that guy off here. And, you know, we got him, we've got him in there and I'm just gonna clear out my drawings so that we can refer back to this guy when we want to, right? But when I look at something like this, the first thing that I'm thinking is I've got two distinct pieces of work. One's gonna collect things in and one's going to display it, right? So if I was thinking about this from the perspective of state and you know how I'm doing all this stuff, what types of things might I need? Anyone got any thoughts for state that could hold on to information for me? List and set list. Perfect. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to actually. Uh, well, let's let's go ahead and uh, let's look at this. 
Okay, so we've got list and set list. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to this one. All right. Well, sorry for components, a list and a display. Okay, so we've got list. Whoa, that just gave me a really, oh, okay. That's because I'm in my photos. All right, uh, list and display, right? And uh, let, let's say kind of list form so that it makes sense, right? Um, and in here, I'm going to need some state for both name and quantity, right? So we're going to have name and quantity. Down here, do I need any state in my display? You'll need the, not the state, but you'll need the, uh, the list. Okay. So we need the, the list here um, and somehow keep hold of it, right? Right. Okay. Good deal. And so now will this guy up top, will he need access to the list? Absolutely. You're talking about app.js? The, oh, I was thinking the list form here. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he needs access to the list so that he can add to it, right? Awesome, that's right. We need to be able to add and remove items to the list. And so here I need to be able to set the list. And here I need to be able to set the list, right? Now there's, there's lots of ways that we can do this. All right. So I just, I want to, I want you to just be thinking about these things as we go along, because there are different ways of doing this. There, when you look at a solution on our, on our platform, if it, if it makes sense, then, you know, great. Uh, but most of the time, it's like my code looks different than that. Well, yeah, you're two different people. You approach problems differently. You use different tools. And so if, you've, if you're more experienced, you may have this like really neat and clean and tidy and beautiful way of doing it. And then the other person that has no experience took 30 lines to do what you did in six. Does that mean it's wrong? Nope. Does that mean it's super inefficient? Nope. Only in certain cases do you have to worry about, oh my goodness, does this line add a whole bunch of milliseconds? Or more likely microseconds? Well, if your program is big enough and you have to worry about that, then let's take some time and, you know, try to make it as, as short and efficient as possible. But the truth is machines now are so fast, it doesn't matter. The key is, does it get the right answer? If I put in an input and I get out the right answer, the output, then you did it right, okay? It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. So, we decided that we needed two different components. So I'm gonna create a components folder here. And my components, I think we decided that uh, we had a list form and we had a, uh, was it display? Let's, let's look real quick. Uh, yeah, display list, right? Yep, okay, there we go. Display list. Okay, so I need to rename that guy. Display list.js. There we go. Okay, and then in here, I just know that I need to import React from React. And then I do a const with the name of my. Uh, component, 
and that's assigned an anonymous function that I think we decided we needed to bring in props. If we don't, that's okay, it doesn't hurt anything. And we need to return in parentheses a div or some other block element that can have children. And here I'm just gonna say h3 uh, my list or my full list, let's do that, my full list. All right, last but not least, we need to export default display list. Now, I will tell you that there are lots of ways to do this whole export thing. And there's even some shortcuts that I personally don't like that are on the platform, but it shows you a different way of doing it. And so if, if you feel so inclined, go ahead and look at those, but VS Code doesn't like them by default. Just so the props, know. right? So that uh, what happens is you do this export default up here. Um, I'll show you just real quick. So this is this is one of the ways that the platform will show you to do it, and I'll tell you, my VS Code editor really dislikes this. So export default props. That's what I was saying. Your other one had prop. Uh oh. Thank you. Darn typos. I, I know that they never get you guys, but they kill me. So that's uh so here I can return a div and in here I can do an H2 um, add to list. Now, technically, this is legitimate code. But you'll notice that everything gets this wonderful yellow squiggle underneath it. And it's complaining about it because of my ES lint. And you can turn that off, which a lot of people do. Uh, but please don't. <laughs> I hope that's not too blunt, but uh, there is reason for not taking the shortcut. Um, and that's why it's considered bad form by uh, what's called linters. Linters, they are a program that looks at your uh, code and it says, hey, is this looking valid? And it goes through and it checks your syntax, whether you've opened and closed with parentheses. That's what typically gives you the little squiggles under everything and says, you got bad syntax here. You're not supposed to do that. Um, and so it's just kind of built into VS Code. But if you, if you do like I did and get another linter in there, it will, it'll squiggle a lot more stuff. And so, okay. So here I'm gonna import my list form from dot slash components slash list, oops, list form. And then I need to import my display list from the components slash display list. And then I want to come down here and I want to bring in my list form and my display list. So now here, oops, don't want that guy in there. All right, now in here, we should now be able to run the uh, NPM start. An NPM start, it's not gonna do anything fancy, right? We all know it's gonna give me a couple of headers and that's about it. So nothing too exciting about this, this web page so far, but it's important for us to, tr to run these things periodically because if I make a mistake, I'd rather be looking in the 20 lines I changed than the 60. Okay, 
It's just a matter of how much do I want to have to worry about, right? So we'll shrink that guy up just a little bit, get him out of the way. It looks like things are, are looking good for us. And so we've been doing some forms already, right? And so let's, let's just kind of look at our forms and think, what do I need? So I know that I'm gonna need state. We decided that already, right? So curly bracket, use state. And then in here, I need to create some consts. Can someone tell me the, the syntax for creating the item name? Oh, real quick. Um, I think that you wrote user state instead of use state oh, at the top. My goodness. No worries. My, my fingers, they've got a mind of their own today. All right. So who's got the syntax for me? How do I, how do I create a new piece of state for my item name? I have a square bracket there. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, I think you'd put list, comma, um, use list, or, or set list, rather, Mm -hmm. uh, camera okay. casing uh, equal uh, on the outside of that use state and depending on what you're going to do you're going to have parentheses and then you're going to have uh, I, I assume a string there so you'll have an empty string so you'll put a uh, quotation marks in there okay or unless so, you want to put an object but I'm not sure what we're actually doing right how we're going to go from there okay well you know the thing is is this is this is looking great for one of the inputs right if, I, if I'm looking at the list, I probably want to put that list in square brackets because a list, the nice way to think about lists is as arrays. Because an array, I can put whatever I want in there and I can make objects and stuff them in. I can put in strings, I can put in numbers, booleans, whatever I want. I can, I can fill up that array with whatever elements I want. Perfect. And so I'm gonna do something similar for the name of our item because we'll have an input in our form for that. And user state there, it popped up its head again. How do you like that? All right. So, and then we needed a uh, quantity, right? All right, and use state. And we probably wanna start this guy off with a number of zero or maybe one, uh, one would be a good default, right? So, all right, with that, let's go in here and let's start on a form, all right? Now, inside of forms, I like to add divs labels and oops, and then um, I like to do an input type type equals text. Um, I know that I'm going to have an on change event. And then I'll end this, all right? So I know that I'm gonna need several or a couple of those. So if I just copy that and duplicate it, here I can add in, say, in my label, name or item name. And then this one, we could do quantity. Is that kind of backwards? I think that's kind of backwards. Let's swap those guys. Okay, so awesome. And then it's unhappy because my on change event doesn't have anything associated with it. Can somebody tell me how I would update a piece of state every time a letter is typed? Um, you're going to have a parentheses with an E, and that would be short for event. Um, you're going to have a fat arrow there. 
and depending on your handle, your handler, uh, which would be above the return, whatever you want to call it, um, I would set that first before I continue that. But I understand it's the event value target. Okay, so I could, I could probably use the set quantity method, my setter from my state. And we would give it just like you said, e dot target dot value, right? Okay, so now that's gonna set that. And if I come down and I just do the same thing, only this time it's set name, right? Okay, that seems pretty easy. If I go and look at my website, that's, I've got my two, my two values here, um, but I'm not seeing anything in quantity yet. Could somebody tell me how I could get my state to show up down in here inside of my input? Does anyone know how to do that one? Does someone know how to put a default value into a text input field? Value, uh, well, there's value. That's right. Yep. Value equals, and then I use my curly brackets to say, nice job, Stephen. The value equals, and I can say that I can use my state right here. I can put my quantity state right there, and here I could put in my name state here. So now if I were to start off my name with, um, let's see here, snacks and one, it's gonna automatically put that into my web page every time I refresh. So here, the, the default values that we choose for state, if I put it in as the value, it just automatically shows up there. Kind of a cool way to get default values, don't you think? So, and not only that, but as they change, as they play around with this just a little bit, let's look at our components. And here's our list form. And here's our state, right? Whew, that really don't, doesn't want to give me much room, huh? So here's my hooks and my state. And I can see that each one of these are set and I can change this, right? We need four snacks and we want them to be sugary snacks. All right, so now we've got state saving onto the stuff that we're typing into our inputs. Now to take it to the next level, we need to have a button, right? And this one's gonna be a button type. Anyone got a suggestion on what type of button we want? Submit. Awesome, good deal. And I think we said uh, add item was what we would say that button would have in it. And then here we need to have in our form, we need some sort of event handler. Do we? What type of event handler is it? On submit. On submit. And uh, so, oh, go ahead. Uh, would you put curly braces in there and then um, have some kind of function above return for, I guess, adding um, that on there? Yeah, that's exactly right. I'm gonna use the curly brackets to say, this is a JavaScript thing. This is a React thing. And I'm gonna create a function called submit item right here to match up with what I just said. And that one's gonna be a, uh, it's going to be an anonymous function. Now here's the catch, the thing that looks a little funny. I'm taking in a parameter of E, but I didn't send an E in down here. That's right. This is something React gives to us 
automatically. You'll notice on submit has a capital S instead of a lowercase s. If you use a lowercase s or like on change, a lowercase c or on click lowercase c, what's gonna happen is it's going to use the vanilla JavaScript version, not the React version. And as a result, it gets confused and causes you headaches. Some of you know that from experience. So in the React version, these synthetic events, as they're referred to, have a capitalized, they're camel cased. And when I call a function, it automatically gives me this E. I don't have to do anything. So this waits for an on submit event and comes up here and passes in E for me. And the very first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that we do not do what the default browser actions are. By default, it's going to refresh the entire page. What happens to our state if we refresh the page? Um, you lose it. It's, yeah. That's exactly right. We completely lose all of our state. And we know that we don't like losing our state. So the simple way is there's a method provided with our event called prevent default. And so we just call that e.preventDefault. Prevents it from reloading the page. And now I can use forms all over the place. As long as I use e.preventDefault, my state stays intact. So here, what I'm going to need to do is I need to update my list. I need to somehow take this data of name and quantity and save it into my list array so that I can then move on. Now, do you guys remember the spread operator? Yes. Okay. The spread operator, what does it do? basically grabs all of the information after, well, when you call it, so you would put dot, dot, dot list, which would assume the information taken, and then you would then set that um, to whatever you're gonna be creating, which would be, um, you would call the use state, right? So it would be mm -hmm. set list, or I think, um, and something like that. Okay, perfect. So here's, Here's what we've got, okay? We call set list, just like Antonio was saying. And the first thing we do is we expand out, we spread out all the elements. It's kind of like us retyping element zero, comma, element one, comma, element two, comma, until we get the entire list. And then once that's done, we do another comma saying, okay, add in one more item to the end of the list. And it's my new item. So if I were to do this, watch this. Let's do a const new item. And that is just, we're gonna create an item and it's gonna have a key of name and we'll use our name state. And we'll have a key of quantity and we'll use the quantity state. So this is creating a brand new object with both pieces of information stuck nice and tight together inside of an object. And that being a single object, I can say, just go ahead and throw this to the end of the list. And so now we're taking our state, this list state, which is an array, and we're gonna start adding things to it. Now, the one thing I almost forgot was square brackets. We need this set list to bring in a brand new array. And to do that, I have to tell it that it's an array by the square brackets. And then I put all my comma separated elements inside of it. So what do you think? Is this gonna work for us?
Am I missing anything? Would we want to reset the use state back by then adding, um, I guess, set list parentheses, not set list, or set name, use state um, parentheses, string just to reset the, this so it doesn't hold on to the information once it's passed, or is that something totally different? That, that's actually really thinking ahead. That was going to be the next step. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So let's let's go ahead and look first. So here we've got this quantity for sugary snacks in our state right now, right? And we can just verify that. We can say sugary snacks one, and I can see my state's updating here. And uh, maybe we need 40 sugary snacks. Okay, state's looking good. I'm not changing that one, that one's staying. So I add to my items, boom. Okay, my state here, it's still those square brackets. It's showing me it's an array. Inside of it, it has an object by the curly brackets. So element zero inside of my state is this specific item. And if I come back and I say, okay, we need four more salty snacks. Can you tell I haven't eaten dinner yet? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I go ahead and add it. And now I've got two elements in my hooks array. This is looking good so far, don't you think? But like Antonio said, let's try and clear these out. Now, here's the cool thing. Technically, we didn't need these to have initial values, right? But I mean, one, it made sense to have a quantity just set to one automatically. But the name, you really don't want to come to a page and have it say sugary snacks because they want to create their own thing. The way we do it is we come down here after we set our list, we're going to set name. And set name is just going to go back to an empty string. And our set quantity is going to go back to one. We want to reset these back to a reasonable default value. Now, I'm changing this in state, but how do I make sure that it makes it to the inputs on the form? Any thoughts? We've already done it. Value equals. That value is going to change every time our state changes. So if I come back through here, I add an item to my list, and then I reset state, well, the important thing to remember is anytime state gets touched, it re-renders this component. So it's gonna come back through and it's recreating this div and the H2 and the form and, and everything. And it's resetting the value to the new value found in state. So let's go look at it. Here I've got my, my quantity, my snacks. I'm gonna refresh this. So we go back to our, whoops getting ahead of myself. I need to save the file first. Always look for that little dot when it doesn't do what you expect. Anyway, so refresh this guy and now <laughs> it's back to where we expect it. And I'll show my hooks, my state again. And here we'll say 10 um, rolls of toilet paper. And I add the item. Boom, there we go. Our form's back to the defaults and our state now has one object in the array. And if I added 11 pizzas, now I've got 11 pizzas 
and my form is cleared. Awesome. Okay. Now for the real question. How do I get my list into a different component? Um, okay, so do you want to display this list? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to get this. I'd like to get this list right here. I want okay. to get it over into my display list component. All right, so um, you can go back to your list form, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. And under this, um, we can, uh, if you scroll all the way down, we could have a display list um, under the form, but within the div. And here you're going to create, this is essentially going to link a component that your, your component. Um, so I would put a display list, well, open, yeah, display list, and then you can do space display list equals uh, parentheses. I would have to see what you have on your display list so we can then uh, destructure that. So we can put that to displaying whatever items you have. Okay. Well, maybe we could just call this one list or item list so that we don't get it too confused here. And we could pass in our list, right? Okay, so if I did that, my, my VS Code editor helped me out. It added display list right to the top. Um, uh, wasn't expecting that, but okay. And uh, so after you have your quantity set quantity, after that you can put a const to, because essentially you want to display this on your page. So you would have to, after this use state, I would create a const uh, with display set display, right? Like you did before. Well, so kind of. What would we what would we be saving in state? Uh, let me just ask that. The info, the items, right? Okay, so I mean, the it's a good idea, but the thing that I'm thinking is. Right now, we're updating this state right here, this list state. And so technically, if I were to just pass that list through properties down to the display list right here. Yes. Okay, so here I'm creating a key value pair that's going to get added to my props object because display list is my component. And then I pass in the things that I want as props to display list. So let's go into display list and we're gonna destructure props to give us that list, or I think we called it item list. Is that what we called it? I believe so. Let's look right here. So we called it item list right here. The left side of that equals sign gives me the name of what I'm gonna pull out of props. And so I set that equal to props, right? So that destructures it and brings it in. Awesome. Now, we just learned about something that will allow us to iterate through all the items in an array. What did we learn about? Map. Map, okay. So now in order to use map inside of this HTML-like JavaScript elements, I need to tell this, the interpreter, I need you to do some JavaScript things here. And the way I do that is just like we've been doing before. We use curly brackets, but we're gonna need a little more code than just a variable name. So I put curly brackets at the top and bottom and indent, and I start going with things. My item list is an array. So how do I use map? Item list. Dot map. There we go. And in here, I'm going to take in, since I can see the map prompt up here, right? It's saying it wants a callback function, which we call anonymous functions as well, or fat arrows. It gets three different possible 
parameters. And then it's going to give me a fat arrow and it's going to do something, right? So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to call this an item because it's each element is given a variable name for me to use it. And if I'm looking at an item list, I'd imagine one element is an item. And then I'm going to have an index. I'm not going to worry about the original array because I really don't need that in the code that I'm going to display. So now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Okay. I know curlies, squares, parentheses, all of it is not quite so easy to keep it straight in your head. I'm going to throw you another curveball. Okay. But this curveball kind of matches what we do with return. Notice how return in this functional component uses parentheses to return that JavaScript HTML JSX. We're intending this function to return JSX, just like this return. So I'm going to add some parentheses instead of the curly brackets. All right. Now I need to return, just like the return statement on line six, I need to return something that is all encased in a single HTML element. All right. Not sure it's liking that. Okay. Get rid of that uh, semicolon. Sometimes I wish there was a better way to know when you needed semicolons or not, too. Um, but the squiggles usually give it away. All right. So inside of this div, I want to be able to show different things, right? We want to be able to show the item name. And so maybe we do, uh, let's, what would we want? Let's, let's do a, uh, we could do a table. What do you guys think of tables? You want to use a table? Or a list. Yeah. I'm just thinking mm -hmm. there's going to be different pieces of information, the, the quantity, the, the item. It's it will work. So let's, I, I'm just going to go for it here. We can, you can do it any way you want. T head, so the table head. And so I'm going to just add in a couple of things. We're going to say quantity. And then I'll make another table head column for name. And then I'm going to add one more table head action. Actions. Because we will want to be able to remove something from our list as well. All right. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the um, instead of a div, I'm going to use a table row. That should make it nice. <laughs> All right. Now, in order to do that, I need to move my table, my closing table tag down here. And I need to get a table body. You guys remember these things, right? And now. I can say inside of my table body, I've got a table row. And my table data is going to come from my item up here. My item is an object that comes from the list. So my item is this entire object. It's got two keys in it. So I could do the quantity is the first thing where my spelling needs to work. 
So we've got our item, oops, curly brackets, right? Item dot quantity. And then you got rid of the divs, right? You, you replace the divs with the TR. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, okay, sorry, I thought we mean, okay, just wanted to make sure I- No, you're, you're good. Okay. And then I want to add in one more table data and this one's gonna be a button. And I'll just say this one's a, uh, I'm just gonna say remove right here. I'm not gonna do anything with it right now. I'm not wiring up any events. All I want to do is I want to be able to display my list. So I've created a header. I created a table with my table head, giving me all the column headers, the table body, and then I put my JSX, my, my code, inside of the space that I want to repeat. This is only the repeating part, all right? And so the repeating part is going to give me a, a row for every single item. And inside of that row, I'm gonna display all the data that I want. All right. So now with this in place, this should be working. So right here, what we've done is we've created in state a list. And then we also created state for the two inputs, quantity and name. When we submit the form, we'll prevent the default so that it doesn't clear out state. We create a new object called an item, and we put in our data from our state from the form. Then we add to our list. The key here is adding to it. Start with what it started with, whether that had 15 items or nothing, it doesn't matter expand out whatever's there and then add one more thing to it. Then we reset state for our form and our form then can go in and update those pieces. So let me ask you here, Josh, what's confusing right now? Help me, help me know so that I can clear it up. You can feel free to unmute and just ask away. Because I will admit, this is this is kind of like expanding the brain going, what is going on? Okay, so my display list changed. All right, so here I've got my display list. Okay. And then in display list, what we did is we brought in the props. Props, we passed in that item list, which is technically state that was created up inside the form. And the form said here, you can use my state. Then inside of my return, I decided I'm gonna create a div to hold all of this stuff. And I have my H3 header, just because I like headers for each component. And I created a table. Now the table, the reason I did that is because I kind of like things to be somewhat organized as far as displaying. And a table is a quick and easy way to do this. And a table, in this case, is going to have a head. And that head is going to have three different parts. It's going to have my quantity. It's going to have the name. And it's going to have actions. So this is the T head. The rest of this will get created dynamically. It's my T body, the table body. Now, depending on how many items are in my array, 
will determine how many rows are going to show up in this table. So if I had one item for my sugary snacks, my table is going to consist of the header and one single row. And it's going to include 40 sugary snacks. And I'm going to have a button right here. And my button, I, I just called it remove so that we can remove things from our list. The key here is this dot map function is going to go through, it iterates through every single element in that array and does the exact same thing. The thing it does is the exact same thing that it's doing is actually taking just a single item and creating this amount of code for every single item that exists. All right. So I think that we're ready to give this a try. You, you doing okay there then? All right. I know some of you really like to follow along with me, so I, I hate to lose you. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's see what happens. Oh, cannot read property map of undefined. Uh-oh. Anybody familiar with that one? Is it because the index isn't linked? That's the error that I'm getting. Or is it something else with the undefined? Well, the undefined here. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting item list.map is not a function. OK. So I was seeing that too, so, but I refreshed, got a different one. OK. Well, let's, let's see what happens if I refresh. OK. Cannot read property map of undefined. This is one that you're going to get familiar with. That's why I'm intentionally trying to show you here. OK. This right here is saying you're trying to use map, but the thing you're looking at is not a, an array. So here's the way that you can troubleshoot this. All right. First things first, I come in and I just comment out all this code. I use control slash because if I highlight it all and use control slash, it just includes it all in a, in a comment. So I don't have to delete it and come back to it. And I'm just going to come up and I'm going to add in a console.log of item list. Because console.log, it doesn't really care what it is. It could be undefined all at once. It's not going to blow up. And the nice thing about that is now it brings me back here. And it's trying to put in two of these things. And I think I know why. Can somebody look at my, my screen here and explain to me what they think might be wrong and why I'm seeing two of these? Is it because there's two displayed list components? There are. Where would the other one be? In your app, I think. Is it rendering your app? Mm. That's exactly right. Good thinking. Let's come back and get rid of this guy. All right, let's see if that fixes it because we had one here and we had one in our list form at the bottom. So if we do that and look, okay, now we've got a single one showing up and you can see that it's, it's indented. When it's indented, it's a child. So I know that this one matches the one that I'm trying to do from list form. The other one was at the same level as list form and so it was from app. All right. So if I'm looking at these components, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this back to the console. And let's see what happens here when I refresh. All right. So now I'm printing out in display list on line six, 
an array. Okay, so huh. it doesn't like my TH. How do you like that? All right, well, well, we'll get back to him. The thing is, let me ask you this. This display list, was it passing in an array for props? Yes, because it's working in the other component. Well, but this particular invocation doesn't have any props getting passed into it. It has no state. So as a result, it, it was saying, hey, we destructured something into a variable that's undefined now. Well, that's because we didn't pass it in on this one. And the only way we knew that to come back to app.js is by coming in here and first commenting out the code. Comment out the code that was causing the problem and use some console logs. Look at those objects, see what they look like, see what's happening. And all of a sudden you're gonna go, oh, it's all good. So I highlight this again and I do control slash. I think it's command slash on a Mac, by the way. And with that back in place, let's see what it looks like. Okay, well, it didn't blow up this time. So let's see what happens if I add 40 sugary snacks. And wow, it's, it's constantly going through and refreshing this thing. Yikes, did we intend to refresh our display list that many times? Whew. Well, let's go ahead and add an item. Oh, here we go. So I've got it here. It created a table giving me my quantity, my name, and my action with a button that doesn't do anything yet because I haven't told it to do anything yet. So let's go ahead and say 15 pizzas. And there it is. It's, it's refreshing that display list again down here with every keystroke. And I add my item. Okay, now I've got it added to my list. Okay, so this is interesting. Do we want our components to refresh every single time we type something? Well, in some cases, but probably in this case, no. Yeah, not really in this case. I mean, the, the list doesn't change until we actually add an item. Mm -hmm. So having it refresh every time we type something in up here is more work than we really need. So there's this really cool thing called lifting state. Okay. Does anyone have a guess on what that would mean, lifting state? Probably not. It, so bringing it to the parent. That's right. So here's a thought. If I took this display list here, and I put it up in app.js. And then I came in and I stole this state and put it up into app.js. How would I make sure that the list gets down to my list form? Can I do that? You have to import it. So import it. There's a special way to, to go ahead and push this down to a child component. Um, would you, above function, would you have the state, um, I'm not sure how they say it, like bottom flowing, like you being that is that even had like anything to do with it? Like sharing of state on your app because it's, no. Yeah, I mean, I, for your function so it can just flow down with the state. So it's not being passed all around. So 
what we can do is it, it's kind of like a, a combination of what you guys are saying. We have to import use state to be able to create our state here at the parent level. But interestingly enough, we had already done this once with display list. Remember we created that state in list form and we passed it down through props into the display list. I can pass just about anything that I want through props to any child component that I want. And so if I were to pass in a list that held our list from state, just like here, and then I can actually pass in set list as well. Now I can name these whatever I would like, but if I pass in list and set list as properties down to my list form, what's happening here, and I'm gonna just draw this out a little bit, okay? So my app component, it goes ahead and it has both the list and set list in its state. Now, if I come down to my display list component, in my current code, I'm saying that my props is an object, right? And inside of that object, I'm creating a list key with the list state inside of it. And I have my set list key with the set list setter. Oops, my bad, my bad. Uh-oh, somebody correct me before I go too far off the rails. So what it is, to display list, I created an item list. And gave it the list. Okay, so item list. Oh, don't do that to me. I tell you, sometimes, sometimes my stylist doesn't like me. So item list is my key and list is the value inside of props. And that's getting passed from my app down to display list. If I come down over to my list form, I'm passing in two properties. So props is still an object and it's gonna have list as a key. And then I pass in the state list. And I, pass, I have the set list key with the set list state. So now both of these guys, the list form and the display list are both looking at apps state. Now, let me ask you, does that make sense? Props is one of those things that can cause a lot of questions. So anyway. My main question is actually for in the display list, when you're setting up the item list map, why is it not connecting the index to anything? It seems like it's, that would cause an error, but it is functioning, correct? Even it is functioning. In, okay, why does the, yeah. why does JS code not realize that it's connected to something? I have the same issue. Okay, that's actually a good point. So, mm -hmm. If the props make sense, how we're passing these down, yeah, then we can jump. All right. 
Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, if we want to go back to that, never mind. So, no, it's it's good. So the thing is here, here's here's what I kind of want to point out. Sure, sure. Right now, if I put that state up in the parent, I lift it up, then I can share that state to two children. Both of them still get access to the pieces that they need. We know that list form has to be able to set new things in the list and it has to have access to the original list so that we don't lose things. We have to be able to spread that one out. So we have to pass in both of these things. The display list is only gonna look at the list. It's, its whole job is to display things, right? In my list form here, I need to worry about something new, okay? I don't have list or set list currently. I need to destructure those. So I'm gonna do that with these curly brackets because props is an object. So I need to destructure from an object using curly brackets. And I'm gonna call it list and set list. Just like I pointed out a minute ago, these are the key names that come from props. All right, so now I have that. It's not happy that display list isn't here anymore because we ripped that one out of here. And now anytime we type something in and it re-renders this section, it's not gonna re-render my display because display isn't here in the bottom. Anything that's a part of this return statement gets re-rendered anytime any of the state changes. So now we've got this guy and we come over to our display list. Now you'll notice the index is grayed out. And if I hover over it, it says it's declared, but its value is never read. So technically it doesn't throw an error, but it's like, hey, dude, Treat me right here, all right? And so let's go back to our web page. I just want to quickly look at this, clear the console, and I'm gonna add in um, one kite that we need to add to our list. And now we're seeing here zero, right? And then if I say, uh, let's go ahead and add in one broom, okay, still moving along. Well, let's, let's go ahead and just see something here. I'm gonna reload this page and try again. Um, one hat. Okay, here is the one that I was looking for. This warning right over here, warning. Each child in a list should have a unique key property. All right, we know that React takes all these pieces and shoves them into the DOM, right? But now if I repeat that same piece of code over and over and over, how does React know which piece of the DOM the kite or the hat belongs to? That's where this warning comes in. All I have to do is come to my parent element inside of the map. And I just say key equals index. This is where I use index. Because what's going to happen now is React is going to keep track of, hey, the hat belongs to this index. All right. And so if I clear this guy away and I add in a toothbrush, I can start seeing things. Here's, here's that. I'm going to come in. Let's just add a hat again. And then I'll add in a, a broom. And then I'll add in a mouse. And I'll add in a keyboard, just whatever comes to my mind first. Okay, awesome. So now 
we're iterating through and every time I add an item and it actually adds to my list, it then refreshes my display. It only has to refresh once. All right. So now we've got things adding in, but it would be really cool if we could remove something. So in order to remove something, we've got a button. We just need to wire it up with, say, an on-click event. The thing is, is the display list doesn't have the ability to change the list. It can only view it. What do I need to do in order to get the ability to change the list in my display list component? Thoughts? Do you need an on change function or no? Or... Yeah, we're we're gonna need an on on click maybe. Yeah. What else do we need? Filter. That's right. We're gonna need filter. So let's go ahead and say const remove item equals and we're going to take in our event and we will have a function and we're going to say uh hmm we still need our setter don't we because we need to be able to run the the setter with our item list how do I get the setter down here? You have to pass it back from app. That's right. We need to go ahead and pass in through props the set, and we can call it set item list because we can name these keys whatever we want. We just have to pass in the right value. So our setter is set list, just like our list form. We can pass in these two things and that way we can set the value there. So, okay, um, here I could do, I need to destructure, pull out the set item list setter and I can use set item list here. And we need to have this as an array. So how did I how did I get the original array back? Or actually no. No, that's right. Set item list is the method. And then I'm going to have to do item list like you guys were saying dot filter. And inside a filter, I'm going to take in a single item, right? Up here, we said we're going to take in filter, and it's going to give us a value. Oops, get, get this right. A value, which is the element, the index, which is a number, the array. All three of these things are possible. And we have to make sure that we return a true or a false value. So if I took in, let's see here, we're gonna look at each item, right? And if that item were to somehow get compared to this item down here, is there something that I could say uh, identifies this item uniquely? It's position and index. The position, the index, the that would do it. Mm -hmm. the, the name, maybe? I mean, the thing is, is if we were really doing this right, you know, when you add an item, if you said five pizzas and then somebody said 10 pizzas, we probably wouldn't allow two, two pizzas to show up in there. We try to combine them. So let's go ahead and just say that the name 
is what we're looking at. So to do this, I have to somehow wire up my remove function with the individual item. This? This is, we would be able to use this in a, uh, in a class component, that would be awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an on-click event and we're gonna wire this guy up with our remove item. Now, typically we would do this, but since we need to be able to pass some extra information into our remove item, like the name of the item that we want removed, we're gonna to need to do this just a little bit different. Just like when we were setting state, what we do is we start off with an anonymous function. What this does is it says, don't run this until we have done the work or until somebody clicks. And then in remove item, I can pass in the event and the item dot name. Would that be minus one in this case since you're, or minus, would you have that there? Oh, actually you ran the function already, but I think. How so would this it is, go? Oh, go ahead. How would it go about removing that item if there's no, um, so it's gonna take the item dot name. Let's say if we were talking about the quantity per se, would it be item dot, quantity uh, minus one, if we yeah. were talking about, okay, okay. We, we, could decre we could decrement, we could create a decrement option. Instead of just removing the entire item together, we could, we could decrement the quantity. That's actually a great idea. So in the name, what we could do is we can say, I want you to iterate through all the items in the list so here, sorry, when we click on this specific button, it matches this name. And so to remove that item, I have to pass in that name as an argument to my function. And so I take in both E and name up here as parameters. The filter, I have to return a true or false. So what I'm gonna say is if the item dot name is not equal to name. So we think about this for just a second. If my list consists of uh, pizza, broom, and scone, and I click on the button here for broom, it's gonna come through this code and it's gonna say, is this one not equal to broom? That'll be true. Is this one not equal to broom? False. Is this one not equal to broom? True. Okay. Now filter is gonna create a brand new array consisting of just the pieces that are true. So my new array is going to look like pizza scone. It's gonna take away the broom from my state. All right. So does that make sense? Now there are different ways. You guys have mentioned the index. We could definitely use the index and we could use array functionality like split and join and different things to, to get like pieces. So it skips over that index and creates a new array. That's totally, totally cool. The nice thing about filter is I can just pass in the name and have it go for it. So um, this, this filter function, admittedly filter here is a bit overkill for this small of an example, but just trying to show how it works because 
this filter is going to re return an entire array. So I don't need square brackets here. If I add square brackets, then it becomes an array with one element that has an array full of objects. So I have to be careful not to add in some extra square brackets here. But this right now is going to clear, uh, it's going to give us that functionality of removing an item. Now, you'll also notice that this E is not highlighted, it's declared but not used. It has to be there. Remember how I said by automatically it gets added? If we don't include it up here, we can end up with some funky stuff because React can slip that event into it and we've accidentally called it name now because we only put in one parameter and it's just a nightmare. So include E whenever you're calling a function and you're giving it extra data and it'll save you a lot of headache and troubleshooting. All right. So what do you think? Have I blown up the world by changing so much all at once? So we'll go ahead and add in a cattle prod here. And we decide we don't like cattle prods. They don't belong in my list. So I click on the remove button. Here goes everything. Oh, look at that. Whoa. We originally had five items in my array, in my state. But now when I print it out, I've got everything except for that guy. That's right, pretty cool stuff. Awesome. Okay, well, I've, I've taken us really long tonight. Um, do you have questions? I would like to, after class on my own, because uh, I know we have time constraints, mm -hmm. add uh, something where it says, okay, if you have a scone already and you type in that item again, it measures and says, if scone name is equal to, I guess, well, if item name is equal to item name in list, then mm -hmm. return string, you already have this item in your cart. Where would I put that just generalistically? Um, that, that yeah. ternary. Okay. So I would put that right here in my list form okay. because when they click on the submit item, that's going to be the point where I could, I could look at it and say, okay, does this exist in my list already? Okay. Right. So before I do the set list, I could do it that way. The other option could be if you wanted you could change your set name okay. so that every time you go the on change, it could go and look at the list and say, hey, does this already exist? And if it does, then we want you to go ahead and flash up before they even hit the submit button. We could tell them oh, right off, yes. right? Um, typically your best bet is waiting until they hit the submit button because sometimes chocolate milk and uh, uh, chocolate milk creamer mm -hmm. at one point would look the same, right? I, I understand. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I just put it into the submit item button. Yeah, that's a great question. So we could also add an edit button. Absolutely, we could change the, the name of something if we wanted to do an edit. That's a great thinking ahead type thing, Josh. Like that. Any other questions? I have a question about the form, but I can wait. Okay. Are, are you gonna uh, upload this code for us? <laughs> yes, I will upload I this code. I was typing along and somewhere in the last five or 10 minutes, I fat fingered something. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> It'll get us every time, that's for sure. Yeah, I'll add this to the to the repo that I've made available to you guys. So yeah, I I think it's good for us to keep that keep this code for reference. Don't don't copy and paste it, you know. Uh, I'll I'll give you a hint. If you find code that does what you need, instead of copying and pasting, type it out. That that muscle memory of as you're typing it, you're thinking about what is this doing as you're typing, and it helps solidify the concepts. So whether you find it on Stack Overflow or you find it, you know, in the lectures, uh, type it out. That's a great way to just make it stick. So, but yeah, I'll That's make it available. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. Any other thoughts or questions? All right, I'm gonna stop the recording and we can see if anyone else has 